Hey, I'm Yasmin Evans, and I'm here at the iconic Abbey Road Studios with the super talented, super lovely Sam Fender, one of this year's shortlisted Brits Critics' Choice artists. Hi, Sam, how are you doing? Hello, mate. How's it going? Very well, but how's it going for you? Congratulations, first of all. I, I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking what? around like, what's going what's on? What's going on? Yeah, this is all a bit, happened a bit quick, that like, for yeah. me. But yeah, hi, man. <laughs> the anniversary's a short lived, but they come back around at a breakneck speed. Where were you when you first heard that you were shortlisted? I was in a taxi. Well, my manager knew. Yeah. So he was like, oh, do you want to come back to mine for a drink? And I was like, I'm going on tour in two days, we don't do that, you know what I mean? So I knew something I mean? was up. Yeah. And we're in the taxi driving past me old high school, which made it even more weird. And uh, yeah, and then on the on the blower was uh, the label. Yeah. And they were like, oh, hi, you've been shortlisted. Who was the first person that you phoned after that? I, I didn't, I just started punching the taxi seat. <laughs> I was just like, Aah! and then like screaming. Out of excitement, obviously. Yeah, and the taxi driver was like, can you pack it in? And I was just like, you don't understand. <laughs> Um, and then I got out of the taxi and then screamed at the top of my voice in the middle of the estate um, in Preston Grange, next to Morrison's, for anyone who's from Shields who wants to know. I um, love that. And uh, woke up the entire neighbourhood. Me and my manager just jumped around like idiots. Uh, and all the lights in the neighbourhood were turning on because it, like, it was like half past midnight. So. That's like a scene from a film. It was nuts. We were like jumping around going, this isn't right because we're just a bunch of dogs from North Shields, so I don't know how it... Well, evidently it is right, because you're super talented, mate. Well, that's, that's very kind of you, thank you very much. <laughs> so it's been, it's been written and quite known, after doing a bit of research, Sam, that you like to talk about a lot of political issues, a lot of social is issues. In your own words, you said you just write about the stuff, you know, that you see. Yeah. So do you feel like people don't write about real life as much as they probably should? I, I don't think that it's like a necessity to write mm -hmm. about uh, political stuff or whatever um i just i do just write about what's in there uh, in my existence and what's in my surroundings it's my like immediate sort of uh, grasp of what's going yeah. on in in my life that's what i write about and i think most people most songwriters do but you do there's no like not every song on the planet needs to be like that you need pop songs you need stuff that is just about having a laugh you need yeah. stuff that's just gonna like make you you know, you want to like have a drink or something. And part of the reason why I've been lucky, I suppose, or to get any sort of like recognition was probably because there's been a bit of a space, I think, in guitar music for that yeah. at the moment. Because um, I think most of the people who are saying, sort of having any social commentary at the moment are like, oh, it's in like the, in the hip hop world in mm. America or like in grime and in, in a lot of, there's a lot of people saying things in that world, but in the kind of indie guitar genre, it's like back in the 80s and 90s and, and, and stuff, that's all indie guitar music was yeah. about. Like, yeah, exactly. I mean, there's loads of great artists that do do the same thing, but I think a lot of them are flying under the radar. A lot of them aren't like getting the sort of the recognition or the or the, or the, or the light shone on them. So, mm. I mean, I'm, I'm lucky. I guess it's because of that, that maybe the, they're giving, giving us a, a bit of a, a soapbox to shout on. Yeah. And also because you're talented, you keep putting yourself down, mate. I'm not, I'm you're not. You're in Abbey Road Studios, iconic. I know, I'm just kind of getting over that as well. <laughs> it's strange. We close our eyes, turn our pain. Nobody ever could explain all the dead boys in our hometown. I am going to ask you a Wikipedia type question, so it might be wrong, okay? Yeah. Because I feel like anyone can tamper with Wikipedia. So I've read that you're, you've been inspired by George Orwell's. 1984, <laughs> correct? Yeah. Um, also, that you're a fan of the pastry restaurant. <laughs> you call it a restaurant? Greg's. <laughs> Are you a fan of Greg's? Yeah, of course I am. I'm a Geordie. <laughs> so, <laughs> you can never read Orwell again. Right. Or you can never have a chicken bake again. I've read Orwell. So but you know, you can never read it yeah, again. Yeah, suck it off. <laughs> it's a pasty, mate. I don't need that. What's Keeps your favourite pasty? I, I was talking about this the other day, and I was saying that, like, the sausage bean and cheese melts pretty pretty naughty in it's the morning, <laughs> but um, I don't know, man. There's loads. I, I quite like the classics, like the really really classic ones, like the just the straight up meat and potato ones, pretty right. good. Um, cheese and onion, mate. Yeah. They're all better. 
Yeah. They're all about. You can't go wrong with the pasty. Yeah, they're all good. Just heartburn central, though, that's all. <laughs> yeah. Like two of them, and I've got to pop four gathers gone before I go on stage. <laughs> yeah, is Love is. that. <laughs> okay, so um, we, were, we were actually speaking when the cameras weren't rolling up how um, quick this journey's been for you. Yeah. And you mentioned, you know, you've just you got signed four months ago now. You found out you were shortlisted for Brit's Critics' Choice literally a week ago. Yeah. It's all fast. So you're still quite new to people. Yeah. So I want people to get to know you, Sam, and know exactly who you are. So time for some quick fire. Right, OK. That's Ready? Right. right, I'm in. OK. What song do you wish you'd written? Um, Racing in the Street by Bruce Springsteen. Let's get rid of the serious tag. Tell me a joke. Oh. oh. Every joke that springs to mind is not on. It's not good. Is it, is it's it like, rude? It's just stuff that I can't say. Our tour manager's like the, the gnarliest, gnarliest person I've ever met in my life when it comes to jokes. And the, the tour jokes at the moment are really, really not um, I can imagine. up for the telly. Like, I'll can't tell. Be I'm just trying to think of something really, really... I'll tell you one. Go on then, hi. Knock, knock. Who's there? I done up. <laughs> I'm already laughing, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I done up. Well, hang on. I can't, I can't. Like, I, I done up. I done up. I done up. You did a bit? Oh. <laughs> that was that was that was there incredible. You go. I'm gonna. I am going to. to yeah, take you're that. gonna use that one. I'm gonna you? use that tonight. Yeah, thanks, mate. On stage in Berlin. <laughs> in They're front not of the gonna audience. Get it. It's gonna alienate the entire audience. Yeah, yeah. probably. It's gonna go bad. And then you can blame me. Yeah. Well, thank okay. you. So growing up, did you grow up in like a musical household? With yeah, music? My, like my so my dad and my my brother were both musicians. So I was kind of like, uh, I was apparently going to gigs at like two. Wow. With no ear protection. Bad parents. Bad parents. <laughs> my parents are quite old. Dad me late. One of them happy accidents with he. Um, and uh, <laughs> uh, so so I don't know why I said that. <laughs> we hey, the <laughs> added way. I don't know why I checked them out. Like I feel sick. So yeah, we'd, I, I was kind of, from the age of two, I was apparently watching my dad's band mm. and watching my brother. My brother was always like smashing drums. He had a drum kit in his bedroom. The neighbours hated it. It was class. So he was always smashing that about. And my, my dad was always playing keyboard. So whenever I had like gatherings, there was always musicians, like all my dad's mates and all my brother's friends were all musicians. Mm -hmm. So I was just constantly surrounded by, by music, which I, I am very lucky to, yeah. to, you know, to have had that. When my dad used to cook, and like all of the songs that we used to listen to and stuff and like so many great like old tunes like Sam and Dave like Hold On I'm Coming and like all of these like mad Spencer Davis group songs and like 60s sort of soul stuff and like it's Love just that. proper earthy music you know mm -hmm. what I mean I think that's why I used to try and I used to sing so hard that like when they left the house because I wouldn't do it until they were going to wait until he's gone to work and then I'd like just start screaming the house down until my larynx was like falling out my throat and then like <laughs> I just kind of, via osmosis, picked that up. Then, at the age of 13, sort of knew that that's what I wanted to do, because I was... And then look now. Proper shit at everything else. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, congratulations thank on being shortlisted. Um, and thank you so much for being here today. Yeah. We wish you all of the luck and all the success for uh, an awesome 2019 yeah. and there on. Yeah, thank I'm you so much. I'm going to clap for you now, Sam. Thank you. Thanks, <laughs> 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 Thank you so much.